So the first kind of surrender that Arjuna did in uh, the second chapter that we are reading from Karpanya Dosha is the soft surrender. That Krishna, I want to surrender unto you and I am not able to understand what is good for me at this point in time. And I am completely lost. So all this while I was your friend, right? That's why he is making that particular point. Shishya ste aham shadi mam tvam prapanna. Okay. So now I surrender unto you Krishna as your disciple. So become my guru and give me advice. Give me your, uh, give me knowledge. Give me intelligence. So that's one surrender. But then if we surrender to somebody, technically if we take definition of surrender, complete surrender is what? When someone says something, there is no questions asked, I just do it. That is complete surrender, right? But Krishna said, okay, then Krishna starts explaining to him. But Arjuna keeps asking question more and more, right? All of the talk that Krishna gives on karma in the third chapter and about soul and about uh, the um, uh, dhira, you know, person who is a dhira, sthithadhi, uh, sthithadhir muni, what is the quality? Huh? So Krishna is giving all of that in the second and third chapter. Arjuna is listening to everything. Suddenly in the fourth chapter he is saying, asking this question, Krishna, but you were born just with us now. How are you talking as if you know everything? So you understand? He is not understood who is Krishna, right? Of course, as Arjuna is the best friend of Krishna, Krishna also tells Arjuna that you are my best friend and you are non-envious of me. So I am giving you this knowledge. Yes, he has amazing qualifications. But what are the other qualifications that are also needed? 100% faith and trust. That whatever the Lord is saying. Pranipatena, right? Completely surrendering to listen and believe 100% with no confusion. So that you can follow whatever they are saying. But Arjuna is still not, Krishna is not allowing Arjuna to be in that position still because these are the questions that we will ask going forward. So Krishna wants to put Arjuna in, in every situation that every question that can be asked and he puts him as the nimitta, as the instrument and Krishna answers all these questions, right? So in, initially it is Komal surrender, okay? Very tender surrender. Looks like it is surrender. Like that, when we repent, right? We repent externally, right? By mistake, we hit a fly. We beat some, but something or we stamp on something and say, ouch, what did I do? But after that, if I'm going to be more conscious that, okay, I should not do this again, that's a little bit better stage of repentance. Truly, I'm repenting so that I will not repeat it, right? But... When we say the devotees are naturally faultless, accidental sins committed by a devotee. So Prabhupada has put very careful language. He is saying accidental sins. Because Parikshit Maharaj, what he has done here was not a very conscious sin. He did not plan to go there to actually take a dead snake. cobra snake and put it on the neck of Shamikarishi. He only did it out of his immediate emotion, right? And the second thing we are talking about, all of the previous chapter, in the 18th chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it was talking about how it was the Lord's will. Every purport of that talked about how it was the Lord's will, Lord's will, Lord's will. What is the Lord's will? Lord is willing for Parikshit to commit a mistake, to commit a sin so that he can die. Is that how merciful the Lord is? Because the big question that arises is, oh my God, if God is there, why do bad things happen? Why are devotees suffering? Right? But what we don't see many times is that the Lord is three kala gya, which means the Lord knows three kala. Gya is jnana, knowledge, knower. Three kala is teen kala, past, present and future. Because he knows his own past, present and future and our past, present and future, whatever he is doing for us or he is making us do as a devotee, we are not able to understand why it happens. But if only we have that faith and trust in the Lord as a child has on his parents, then things go very smoothly. That's how, that's the example of Parikshit here, right? So Parikshit Maharaj, it was an accidental sin that happened 
And through that, what is Krishna trying to give? Srimad Bhagavatam. Is my life fully planned by God? Do I have free will? This is the question, right? Is God planning my life or am I planning my life and my future? So the the point is it's a mixture. Okay. Um, so again, Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto. Uh, Kapila Dev is talking to his mother Devahuti. He says, Karmana Deva Netrena. Jantuhu deho papataye, striyaha pravishta udharam, pumsaha retaha kanashrayaha. So he's telling uh, Devahuti that two things are going to be deciding how a person, a child is put into which mother's womb. It could be a dog's womb, it could be a mother, uh, a human's womb, it could be a mosquito's womb. So how does this work? How do I plan it? Is a God planning it? So Kapil Dev is saying, of course, two factors are there. One is karmana. My, your own karmas that you're doing. Daiva netrena. Supervision of the daiva. So when both come together, then a child is decided to be put in the womb of a particular mother and then we are born in the family and then we grow. After that, what happens? Okay, I'm born. Then what happens? What decides my every action? Actually, that is decided at the time of death. What do you think? And yes. That, that so everything, it's a cycle, right? So where do we start? Where do we start with the cycle? So... Today's discussion, we'll start with the cycle of birth. Huh? So how is it? Karmana and Devanetrena. By my actions and by the supervision of the Lord. So then after I'm born, now what happens? So we do hear things that everybody say do and don't do. Right? And that's why parents are given. So if parents are someone that has given and gotten proper samskaras, conditioning, and they have they are ready to give it, to the children, to their children, that's wonderful. Then they hear, they know it. Again here, two things work. What are the two factors? One is what I receive from my family as values, from my background, my culture. Another is what I decide to do. Again, the free will and my values and background. Those two factors work. So, same family, two children. One is wanting to be fully 100% focusing on spirituality, following values to the T. I want to do everything as per the scriptures. The other one wants to be a freak. It's a choice. It's an individual choice. How much can we control? To a certain extent. Till a certain age, the child can be taught what to do based on our culture and values. After a certain age, when we force it, it only goes viparitani. The opposite, right? So what do we do? Some of them like Shabda Praman. So there are three types of Pramanas, right? Shabda Praman, Anuman Praman and Pratyaksha Praman. Right? So some of us want to, yeah, you're saying it, but don't worry, you don't know this day and age. I will Pratyaksha, I will experience it firsthand and then I will learn it. Don't teach me anything anymore. I'm grown enough. Second one is Anuman. Oh, something happened to someone. If I did this, it will happen to me as well. These are little more intelligent than the Pratyaksha. Experience. experience. Another's experience. Yeah, learning from another's. I'm not doing it, but I'm seeing someone else, and then I'm learning it. The third is the best variety according to the scriptures, which is Shabda Praman. I'm not even seeing. I don't have to be in that association to see and that experience someone else is having. If I heard it, if I'm hearing that this will happen, I can keep away from it. So, each one of us take our own by the nature that we have had and the karmas that we have gone through and the conditioning that has been there for births and births together is what decides how we will live our life in this birth. So, these two factors work. One is the culture, background, values that parents are ready to give. Another is what am I able to receive and how much do I want to follow. Yes, I have it in my mind. But I can't follow it now. I'll do it at some time. Right? So that is the next thing. As I'm growing. Uh, and in this process, where is God? Right? So these two factors are working. My parents or my culture, my background and me. Where is God? God is sitting there as Paramatma, as Chaitya Guru. From within, he's constantly screaming in our ears. Sometimes we call it intuition. Sometimes people call it the universe. Sometimes people call it uh, the... Um, there's something new that people say these days. It's mindfulness. It's attraction. 
you know when i keep meditating and focusing on it i attract it to myself right so whatever we call it is a lord ultimately in in any of these circumstances the lord because he is the giver he is the original giver right so he is sitting there and he is trying to show us what is good or bad so if we can hear him and correct ourselves this is one way which where god is present another is as shiksha guru externally the one who is giving me shiksha third is diksha guru the guru that i want to get initiated from and the parampara that i want to follow so these are also some of the factors that are existing with me where i can actually when it comes to me my personal things i can follow or choose not to follow or not to follow now but after some time i will follow because right now i want to enjoy life i don't want to restrict myself but during the process of enjoying life do i remember my rules and regulations how to live it right am i looking for instant gratification or delayed gratification right i want to do everything right now so in that mode that instant gratification is my major uh, uh, point of uh, conviction then i go ahead with the same right so i'm living like this and then till end of life with all these factors i have created lot of karmas right so there is akarma vikarma karma karma is something which i am performing based on the scriptures rules and regulations i go to school there are rules and regulations that are given to me if i am going to follow all the rules and regulations of the school then i'm a good child i stay in the school then um so yeah okay for whatever questions i'm writing i'm getting answers there is nothing special that happens to me i just live then there is vikarma uh vikarma is viparitani karma right opposites whatever it's not exactly viparitani karma i'm just saying vikarma huh? so everything that is done written in the scriptures rules and regulations i do viparita of everything i know what not to do and i only do that so then what happens again the school example i'll get kicked out of the school right or i will be punished so that is vikarma then there is akarma which is uh doing activities and offering the results of those activities towards the supreme lord right so in that process what happens krishna takes away if i am performing all of these activities and the results are given to the lord the, to the supreme lord then what happens the effect the good and the bad results are being negated completely destroyed by the supreme lord that becomes a karma so okay we can take the example of a favorite child of this teacher okay then what happens even if you do some things in your in your own value list it's not good so you're not going to do anything you're doing everything and you're giving all glory to your teacher what's going to happen come on that's an amazing child right so the teacher is definitely going to be extremely happy then the teacher is talking to the principal then you know the president is coming getting special awards then he is getting double promotion in all the classes he leaves the school much ahead of all his friends that is a karma so we leave this material world when we do akarma much faster than those who are doing karma and akarma wait sorry vikarma makes sense so this is another factor set of factors that we need to consider okay there is me and my culture i decide i choose what to and what not to then there is definitely my karmas and in karma there are these three uh, aspects so with all of this present and it brought a beautiful point to say in the end of my life right yam yam vyapi smaran bhavam tejatyante kalevaram tam tam evaiti kaunte right sada tad bhav bhavita so whatever i am thinking at the time of death in my mind right then i get that particular uh, nature okay so good luck that also means it is like an exam life is like an exam what i focus in my mind we do not understand the power of mind 
mind is so strong just like uh, so we'll talk about the power of mind uh imagine you're driving a car okay those who those who drive right and uh, we're not so good in driving cars okay what will happen <laughs> what would happen if i look that side my hand will also turn that side have you felt that <laughs> right so for people who are professional drivers when their eyes look here and there their hand is steady for people who are just even after 15 years you can still have that kind of a shaky uh, driving uh, you know uh, pattern that wherever your eye goes your hand also moves there so you are very careful i am like that horse with those uh, you know shades on i'm not going to look anywhere i'm looking one direction and i am driving if i look here or there i will get messed up right so like that when the mind focuses on something then our entire senses also go that way right so focus of the mind if we are not trained to actually control our mind right it's very dangerous this is like exactly me driving a car and still not able to steady my hand when my eyes go anywhere else exactly like that i'm not able to hold my mind so my senses are also drifting as my mind drifts so what am i i am a still amateur mind uh, controller right so my the question is then so how long does it take for the mind to get controlled <laughs> right we can live an entire life because the stimulus from the world is going to be there forever yes if we don't consciously opt for controlling the mind and actually focus on the positive focus on the good things focus on being grateful focus on the god focus only on what i need to do for my own soul's purpose instead of thinking of what are others goals in life what are others doing what are all the negatives what are the things i can cry about then what happens mind is always going to be disturbed are there not things which we can actually be happy about yes there are right but when we choose to be unhappy about something all the time then what happens vepatushya sharire me roma harshashya jayate gandivam sramsate hasta tvachayeva paridakhyate every day is like arjuna standing on the battlefield correct because i'm stressed about everything i'm unhappy about everything and everybody standing against me seems like my enemies it could be my own kinsmen but it seems like i'm waging a war against everyone every single day because i do not understand what kind of relationships i'm building because my mind is disturbed right so is that a problem of someone else no it is my own problem of not being able to control my mind why because i don't understand the power of my own mind mm-hmm.